Hi, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the entire drawing process of this realistic elephant using charcoal pencils. So let's get started. So as always, these are the art supplies I'm going to use for this drawing and you can pause the video right here to note them down. I'm using this premium 350 GSM paper by Grupo Cordinos, which was imported from Belgium. And the drawing portion area is 18 cross 20 inches. But the surface of this drawing paper is quite similar to ordinary chart paper. So you can use whichever is available. I drew the outline using grid method and you can find the detailed step by step process from making the grid to outlining on my Patreon profile. Link is in the description. Ok, so let's start the background shading process and I'm firstly scraping some charcoal on my scraper to convert it into a powder. And then shading the area using a medium sized dry brush. If we look at the reference image, we can see that the background is pitch black and the charcoal wasn't turning out that dark. So I shifted towards the black pastel chalk and started adding the background. I'm working in small sections by firstly shading the area and then blending it using my fingers. And it is turning out quite darker just the way I want it. I'm also layering the pastel on the areas which are looking a little bit dull and patchy to achieve a smooth layer. While shading the background, I noticed that almost 70% of the powder was falling off the paper and only 30% is in use. So I added this hard charred paper collector at the end of the drawing so that it gathers all the powder which can be used to shade the drawing later on. In this way, we can reuse the powder and reduce the waste. I'm repeating the similar process and shading the whole background very carefully. Now as we can see, a lot of powder has been collected at the bottom. So now I'm using it to shade the rest of the portion. Ok, so let's move on to the ear detailing process and in this start, I'm experimenting to find out the best technique for you guys so that you can follow that easy and effective method to achieve better results in no time. I'm blending the previous texture and adding base layer using a charcoal powder with a bigger size blending stump. But it wasn't turning out as dark as I wanted here to match it with the reference image. So you can skip this blending stump layering and follow the method which I will follow later on. Ok, so I'm back to my old technique of directly shading the darker areas using a charcoal pencil. And you can follow these steps to shade your drawing like a pro. Make sure to keep the angle and pressure low on your pencil while adding this layer to avoid harsh strokes or lines. Charcoal pencils usually come in three different grades. Hard, medium and soft. The soft and medium ones require less pressure and can turn into powder very easily. While the hard ones need a little bit pressure. For this drawing, I'm using an edge pencil. But you can use any of them as the only difference is in the softness of the charcoal. Ok, so I'm carefully adding a mixture of straight strokes at the edges of the ear and blended base layer where required. Just like this. Now it's time to blend the base layer and I'm using my dry brush in circular motions to achieve a smooth base. While blending this layer using a brush, a thought just came into my mind that why not try a blending stump and see how it works. And it wasn't turning out the way I expected. So I'm again shifting towards my small size dry brush and planning the whole left ear. And by the way, you can get access to our premium content and support this channel through Patreon. You can sign up through different membership levels and get access to all the outline and grid references etc. We have an ever growing library of hundreds of exclusive and real time tutorials. And you will also get access to 4 new tutorials every month. You can also post your artworks in our active community of patrons and participate in our weekly critique sessions where I give my honest and positive critiques on your artworks. So you can improve your skills and get better with your drawing. Visit the link in description and become a premium member today. Ok, so when the base layer is done, now it's time to add highlights and texture using my white pastel pencil. I'm carefully going into the lighter areas between the darker ones to create a 3D texture. Just like this. Notice that I'm keeping the angle on my pencil very low to achieve blended strokes without any harsh lines. The center portion of the ear has a wide blended highlight. So I'm shading the area by keeping the pressure and angle low. And now I'm lightly blending it using my fingers. You can also use a clean brush for this purpose. 
some of the darker shade looks missing. So I'm adjusting it by adding another layer of darker charcoal over the previous one. And now continuing with the highlights using a pastel pencil just like the way I was doing earlier. The only difference is that I'm adjusting the darker part as well in between the highlighting process to achieve smooth results. Some of the shadows and texture on this lower portion of the air near the trunk looks missing. So I'm carefully layering charcoal to achieve desired results. Ok so moving on to the top portion and when we look at the reference image we can see that it is brighter than the rest of the ear portion. So I'm adding this brighter line along the outline and then shading the required portions to make them look more 3D. Ok so moving on to the folds that are in between the ear and forehead portion. And I'm firstly sharpening the tip of my charcoal. You can rub it on a rough surface like a scraper to create this chisel tip which is perfect to add thin details. Now by using this pencil I'm darkening the direction lines which I've added earlier during the outlining process. I'm also adding some new strokes in between the previous ones to achieve the required texture. Notice that I'm also shading some area using a pressure technique to add depth. I'm applying lower pressure to shade lighter areas and then increasing the pressure for the areas which are darker. When the darker texture is done, it's time to add the highlights and I'm using a white pastel pencil for this purpose. I'm adding these strokes on all the lighter areas in between the darker strokes. The dark and light contrast will immediately make the skin texture look realistic and 3D. Make sure to use the sharp tip while adding such intricate details to avoid thick and blended strokes. There are some fine thin hair right below this fold. So I'm adding them using my sharp tip white pastel pencil. Place the tip of your pencil on the paper and flick it in one go to achieve a smooth stroke without any blunt end. Try not to move slowly and nervously or else you will end up with wavy looking strokes. I'm changing the length and direction of these strokes to achieve realistic results as too much uniformity makes the overall drawing look flat. The black charcoal layer we added earlier is looking unblended so I'm adjusting it first by adding white pastel layer and then adding required hair texture just like the way I added earlier. The ear portion is still looking a bit dull to me so I'm adjusting it by layering charcoal over it and then blending it afterwards. Ok so moving on to the forehead and left eye portion and the process here is almost the same as we did for the fold portion. So I'm darkening the direction lines first and adding some new strokes in between using a charcoal pencil. I'm also adding the blended shades in the forehead to achieve a 3D base. And now when the darker base layer is done it's time to blend it using a small dry brush. Notice that I'm only blending the areas which are softer in the reference image and leaving the areas which are darker to achieve the required base. I will lock these darker strokes in place later on by adding white pastel layer over them. Ok so now it's time to add white texture in between the black one. And I'm using a pastel pencil with a variable pressure to achieve required light and bright strokes. I'm applying higher pressure to achieve bright and defined strokes and then reducing the pressure to add soft and blended ones. Just like this. And that is how you will easily create the required texture in just a few simple steps. I'm repeating the similar process on the rest of the forehead portion. The only difference here is that I accidentally spilled the black layer over the forehead while blending the background. So I'm erasing it using a mono zero eraser and then adding a white pastel layer afterwards. When you're done with the texture on the forehead, let's move on to the right ear. And again I'm firstly cleaning the spill of black pastel using a mono zero eraser to get a clean base. Now repeating the similar process of detailing as I did for the left ear. Make sure to keep on relating to the reference image to make sure you are on the right track and add details accordingly. I always suggest keeping the reference image in front of you in either soft or hard form to make the process a lot quicker and easier. Moving on to the eye and I'm slightly darkening the direction lines first along with shading the required areas which have depth in the reference image. I'm then carefully blending the edges of the darker strokes to fill the lighter areas. Notice that I'm not going over the areas which are darker in the reference image. And don't worry about the patchiness of this dark layer we added on the forehead as it will automatically blend when we add white layer over it. 
okay so as the darker texture is done so as always now it's time to add the white texture using a pastel pencil i'm going in between the darker strokes to create an illusion of raised and lower or bumpy skin notice that i'm also shading the forehead portion and you can see that the layer seems blended now and it created the perfect gray color that we wanted here i'm repeating the similar process for the rest of the eye portion until i achieve the desired results okay so let's move on to the trunk portion and as always i'm darkening the directional lines first using my chisel tip charcoal pencil when you have successfully darkened the directional lines let's sharpen the pencil first and then lightly shade the whole trunk to give it a base layer notice that i'm keeping the pressure and angle on my pencil very low to achieve a very soft and blended layer as we move towards the bottom the trunk is becoming slightly darker in the reference image so i'm gradually increasing the pressure on my pencil to create a perfect gradient make sure not to shade with a high pressure as it will ruin the whole area by making it extra dark i'm also adding some textural lines onto the legs by using the same charcoal pencil if we look at the reference image we can see that the legs have some boxy texture so to create such an effect i'm firstly adding these slightly wavy horizontal lines and then adding these vertical straight lines all over the front leg portion and this will create a required base texture for the back leg i'm only darkening the directional lines and shading the area to create a 3d base the top portion of the trunk is still looking a bit dull so i'm going over it and adding depth by keeping the pencil at a very low angle now it's time to blend this layer and as i did earlier i'm only blending the areas which are softer and leaving the strokes which are darker in the reference image to create a perfect 3d base i'm only blending the top portion of the trunk as i'll be working in smaller sections to avoid smudging Notice that I'm also layering charcoal over the required forehead portions, specifically the ones which are looking dull, to achieve the required darkness. Okay, so as the blending is done now, it's time to add the highlights and lighter texture, and I'm layering white pastel over the forehead. Notice that I'm keeping the pencil at a very low angle to avoid harsh strokes. I'm keeping the pressure high while layering the pastel onto the areas which are brighter and then reducing it as I move towards the darker portions. This white pastel layer will also blend the previous charcoal layer and give the whole portion a very smooth look. Okay, so moving on to the trunk and I'm repeating the similar process of layering in between the darker strokes as I did earlier. The only difference here is that I'm keeping the pressure on my pencil variable. I'm firstly shading the fold with a lighter pressure to achieve an even layer and then increasing the pressure to add some brighter strokes and lines where required to create a 3D texture. I'm repeating this similar process for the rest of the folds as well. Notice that I'm also darkening and adding few intricate strokes in between the highlighting process using a charcoal pencil to complete one section at a time. and it will immediately lift up the whole texture and make it look realistic and 3D moving on to the legs and i'm firstly blending the previous layer using a small dry brush now it's time to add a lighter texture and i'm repeating the similar process of going in between the darker strokes as i did earlier take your time while working on this area as it has intricate texture so add these thin and small strokes very carefully While adding this lighter texture, the darker strokes become a little bit dull. So I'm going over some of them and using a chisel tip charcoal pencil. This will bring all the previous layers together and make the area look realistic. Moving towards the front leg, and I'm repeating the similar layering of white and black texture, just like the way I did for the back leg. Okay, so coming back to the trunk, and the texture here is similar to the texture we have added earlier for the top portion of it. So I'm following this similar method and layering the white and black texture where required. Okay, so before completing the rest of the trunk portion, let's add details in this left tusk. And I'm firstly adding these curved strokes all along the right edge of the tusk and this texture will make it look round. Notice that I'm also shading the right side of it to create depth. When the smaller strokes are done, I'm extending some of them till the left outline to create the required texture. I'm repeating the similar process for the front part of the tusk. 
Now as the darker texture is in place now, it's time to blend this layer using a small dry brush. Okay, so let's add a white pastel layer now. And firstly, I'm adding a straight line all along the left outline. And then placing my pencil onto the left side and flaking it towards the right side to add these curved strokes. White and black strokes will merge together from the center and create a required blended texture. I'm also adding a bright line all along the right outline to make the tusk pop up even more. Okay, so some of the brighter highlights are still missing so I'm going over the previous strokes but with a higher pressure this time to achieve the required results. I'm also shading the tusk lightly to create an illusion of texture at the back and will add a new one on the top later on. This layering will make it look more 3D and realistic. Now to add the final touches to the darker texture, I'm using my chisel tip charcoal pencil and adding these strokes with a variable pressure. While working on tusk, I noticed that the legs are still looking a bit incomplete. So I'm adding the required depth and shadows as well. Coming back to the tusk and I'm repeating the similar process for this front part as I did for the rest of the tusk. Okay, so let's shade the remaining portion of the front leg and the drill is same as I did for the rest of the portions. I'm adding these darker textural strokes first and filling in the whole area as this portion is darker in the reference image. And then using my white pencil, I'm adding these thin slant strokes with a very light pressure to achieve softer ones. I'm adding a mixture of smaller and bigger strokes in between to give the texture a more natural look. When the lighter texture is done, I'm adjusting the thickness of lighter strokes by adding another layer of strokes in between the lighter ones using a charcoal pencil. Okay, so coming back to the trunk and the overall process is the same as we did for the upper portion of the trunk. So I'm repeating the similar process using my black and white pencil respectively. Notice that the lower portion of the trunk is darker in the reference image. So I'm shading and detailing it accordingly. For the right leg and tusk, I'm again repeating the similar process as I did for the left side. When the whole texturing and detailing is done and you are satisfied with the final results, it's time to add the remaining background. And as I did earlier, I'm using the pastel chalk to shade the area first and then blend it using my fingers. I'm using the leftover powder to shade the empty spots until I achieve a smooth and even background. You can go back and adjust the outline if you have accidentally smudged it while shading the background. And with this last step, we are done with this quick and realistic elephant drawing. It takes so much time and effort to create this free drawing tutorial for you guys. So please leave a like if you enjoyed this one. It helps me a lot as an artist. So thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.